Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be talking about the early game progression of Brighter Shores. So when you first get to Hopeport, there's going to be a map with basically nothing on it. You have to explore all of this. So now that I've explored everything and I've tested all of the levels, I'm on a, uh, a secondary account to kind of explain what you should be doing in this early game. So as soon as you get to the training ground, the first thing you're going to want to do is obviously the main story quest. And the main story quest is going to basically just tell you to get to level 15 in one of the professions, that profession being guard. At level 15, you're going to actually unlock more of these uh, main stories. So you're actually going to be able to get your bow in the training ground, which is really nice. And then it basically tells you to get your total hope port level to 60. At that point, that is all you're going to focus on is getting your level to 60. While you're doing that, I do suggest highly to get the obelisk complete. This is a quest that you should be doing. The obelisk basically allows you to attune un tuned weapons this is very important and gear as well this is very important because you're going to get drops like this let's go to my gear like this legs that i got is very very good for me i cannot use it unless i have the obelisk quest completed and i tune it with the obelisk because it is untuned when it drops so if that makes sense you do want to make sure you do the main story up to this point as well as the obelisk quest so you can actually tune items. So after you have those two quests done, questing's kind of out of the picture for a second. You don't really have to do any of these extra quests at the moment. Uh, the main thing I would focus on is actually learning the game. The first thing I would kind of say is the best thing to do as a new player is to actually go everywhere and hit Control S. Control S is going to be your senses, so you're actually going to be able to see everything on the map, and you can discover those things, and then they pop up like you can see here in Overgrown Field. Um, we have the Bugmen, we have Nettles, we have Pond Weeds. They show the levels of each. It's very easy to kind of navigate and get around when you have everything explored. So that's something you definitely want to do, but you can do that while you're doing other things. So after exploring a lot of the map, or if you want to, you know, explore the map as you go, the biggest thing you want to do is get that total level up to level 60. Now, I wouldn't suggest just doing that only through the guard skill, and that is because there are so much other parts of this game that are going to help you and benefit you, and if you don't know how to utilize them or use them at all, it's not going to be very good for you. So the first thing I want to showcase is the fishing method. So again, fishing is going to be very simple. It's actually going to be really, really easy to get fishing and your... Um, your sorry your forager skill up very easily together because if you look at the map at the very south side again this is where you're going to start on the game you go and you see east beach east beach is going to have flounder level zero and kelp level zero and then you also while those are on respawn can go over here to jellyfish landing and get more kelp here's what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get the fishing and the forging skill to level two at level two you can actually do much easier tasks to level it up and that's going to be on your way between quests and doing other things you can actually just go and catch eel which is more central to the town square and really every quest is going to bring you around this area so again eel street bridge is going to be a great place for you at level two and then also here we have after you get the forging to level two you have old street west which has wall plants and Old Street East, which also has wall plants that you can pick. So that's going to make leveling these skills a lot more passive and easier to do instead of running all the way down to, you know, this northwest side of the map. Uh, again, I think this is a very, very important part of the game is getting these skills to level two. I know that sounds ridiculous, like what's level two really going to help us? But again, it's going to be so much more passive just running through the town square and being able to pick some of these eels up or wall plants up on your way. So the next thing you're going to want to do is make sure you get your alchemy to level two as well, because you're going to get some potions doing so, and these potions can definitely help you out. So if you go to the apothecary, it's a very simple process to actually use these. Uh, and, and the greatest part about this is you already have the materials to make these potions. And that came through the forging down with the kelp that you did earlier in the game. So when you got level two, getting all that kelp is actually very useful. Now, one thing you could do with the flounder is you can either sell it at the Eel Street Frequently Fresh Fish Stall, or you can just drop it because the flounder is not going to be used in what we're doing with cooking. So again, you can sell it or you can just drop it out of your bag so you have more space for kelp. And uh, with that kelp, you can make potions. Again, the flounder is not going to be very useful besides the point of selling it at the Fresh Fish Stall. So after you have those 
all completed, you can now go into the next profession, and that is going to be cooking. It's the last one of episode one, the early stages of Brighter Shores, and that's going to be chef, cooking, whatever you want to call it. You do want to do this for sure, and this is something very, very simple. So with cooking, it's a little interesting because cooking is going to be something you can't even use uh, eels yet. You can't use really anything that you've caught um, because a level zero, you can see here actually with the fishing spear, you can just catch flounder and flounder is not used in cooking. So because of that, the basic sandwich or sorry, the bacon basic sandwich is going to be the only thing you can really make. So you want to go to Kevin here and I'll show you on the map where that's at. Kevin's going to be here at the top. It's going to cost a little bit of money. So if you want to wait on this, you definitely can, but you can go over here, you can trade him. And we just, let's say buy one of each just to kind of showcase how this works. One bacon, one bread, very easy to do so. And if you're selling the fish from previous, again, this will probably be not too expensive because you've been selling that flounder, that useless flounder to that fish stall. So we go through here, we go to the cookbook. This is going to be something you're always going to do. It just explains exactly what you want to do and how to do it. So frying pan for the bacon and then the preparation table for the bread. So the frying pan is the first thing we're going to do. We're going to use our bacon, our one piece of bacon on the frying pan. So here we go. Once that completed, it uh, gives us a little bit of XP, I believe. And we can actually go over here, put the bread here together on the preparation table with the bacon. And we've completed the sandwich. So it's going to give us actually XP at that point at the very least. So now that we have that, we can get some of our money back too. So if you look here, it is going to be in our bag. And we can actually hit info on it, 560 coins. So again, 560 copper I'm going to go with. I believe it's copper, silver, and gold that you get. And we go to trade. You can see that 560 coins for that item is more than what you're actually going to be buying these for. These are buying at 200 a piece, 200 a piece, so a total of 400, obviously. And if you look again at the uh, the sandwich, they're going to be selling for 560 uh, copper coins. So because of that, you're actually going to be generating 160 copper each single time you do this. So if you have enough gold, you should actually be buying more than one at a time. Obviously, do five or ten at a time, and you can uh, quickly make some money as well as level your cooking skill to again, hopefully level two, because at level two. That's when it really comes to play with those eels that we talked about, is you can start cooking with eels. Actually, it was in here that we looked at that. Uh, let's go to cooking. Yeah, jellied eels. That is going to be at level two. And level two is also on fishing, where you can start getting those eels. So it all comes together. Again, all of these professions come together a little bit at level two. So from there, the only other thing I would say is completing your main story is key. So leveling up to level 60. And by doing so, you can do these side quests now that you have found throughout the world because those are going to help level you up as well. So you might as well do those as you try to level up to 60. And one thing I should quickly mention as well, really, uh, is that you can get the fishing supplies, because I, I would assume you guys know this, but definitely should mention it in case you don't. You can get the fishing supplies from, what do you know, the fishing supply shop. Um, it's just usually very, very simple. If you hit the map, you probably haven't seen it yet. Uh, but if you want to pause at any point in time during this video, you can actually pause and see the map for yourself and understand uh, what it all looks like fully filled out on episode one. So thank you guys again for tuning in. Hopefully this helps you guys out through day one, level one, episode one, you know, getting just to that uh, main quest level 60 is going to be your new goal. So thank you guys again for tuning in. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on. I'll see you all in the next one.